We are. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for being part of my experience. I've been looking forward to this for months. The question I have is, there have been a few times in my life where I kind of entered into slow motion, where time almost stopped. And it was a couple car accidents, and another time I'm slipping on the ice. And then um, um, a couple times, there was a voice that came from within, with from my solar plexus, that told me what to do in the moment and it was like the perfect instructions and i was just wondering what that was we think this is a really good conversation to begin with today because we are just talking about that broader perspective we're talking about who you really are we're talking about how your inner being or whatever you want to call that consciousness that part of you is present with you here and now so when it really matters when you are in a situation like you've described slipping and falling or in the middle of an out of control car accident there is a usual not always but there is a sometimes letting go of your own control and you know how you said just now i've been looking forward to this for a long time well you have that momentum about well-being that has been going for a long time too so since time is perceptual and since in those situations you let go of your control for a moment that broader perspective simply became dominant there is so much more what you are calling time for you to view or examine the details of a moment but because you keep driving out the driveway the same way all the time you establish an expectation that could be different if you would let it be and when you have experiences like that Esther remembers walking around a lake at a hotel in Orlando with Jerry and there was a raise in the sidewalk and Esther stubbed her toe on it and was going down and somehow she had that experience too where time slowed and Jerry caught her and broke her fall in about five different ways and she just sort of floated softly to the ground and she looked up and she said that was fun <laughs> that was fun because she was going down but because both of them were in that sort of what you want to call a time warp or a different perspective of time well if you could accept that you have source within you who is aware of where you are at all times and this is the statement we've been making it but we want to make it right here in relationship to this so you will all hear it in an even stronger way your inner being knows always where you stand in relationship with where you want to be and knows what the path of least resistance is to get you there and so you have so many more resources so much more help than most of you allow yourself to receive and the reason oh we like your story the reason that more of you don't allow more of that help is because somewhere along your physical path you've picked up the notion the bogus erroneous flawed premise notion that you're here to prove something and that you should do it yourself and so for you in this example you had to be in a completely out of control situation before you let go and allowed that broader perspective to help you out anybody else had experiences like that then you know what we're talking about so our encouragement is acknowledge that and then let the help be there all the time all the time harmonize with that broader perspective all the time because it's there and it's knowing and it's loving and it's helping all the time it's helping all the time those were your words weren't they yes you could feel that it was help and you heard it you translated it you knew it and it worked didn't it it made it better under those conditions but you're so funny we love you so much <laughs> you wait until you're in trouble before you ask 
and then when you ask you can't listen because you're in trouble so just fall down more and let source help you and after a while you'll start to expect help to be there for you you'll let it in more you'll let it in more something else no I think that'll do it thank you very much yeah Got to go it alone. Got to prove your worthiness. Where do you get that stuff? This is a universe based on attraction. There's no exclusion. So when you say no, no to that thing, I do not want, I'm blocking it out. You're not saying no, you're saying yes. Because you're acknowledging its existence. You're acknowledging that it's big. You're acknowledging that it's, it's sort of after you. You are carving a pathway without even meaning to. So what it comes, we know this is annoying, but what it comes down to you, it is recognizing that every subject is really two subjects, wanted and not wanted. And you can tell by the way you feel whether you're leaning in the direction of the wanted or the unwanted. So lighten up, accept that you live in a world of diversity and balance and variety and bless this world because out of it, you have carved your ideas of who you are and what you want, which are dominant. Acknowledge that the source within you is wrapped all around all of that that you want and is looking to you and through you for the fulfillment of all of it. Acknowledge that it doesn't matter what negative or contrasting components helped you come to those conclusions. They are non-issues now because they did their work. You've launched the rocket. It has become a vibrational reality. The source within you is there offering the vibration of that reality in such a powerful way that if you're not doing that thing you do by trying to block that, that you will find yourself in a vibrational place where you will receive inspiration and the vibration of it will turn to a thought and an emotion mm -hmm. and then to words and then to behavior and then to material objects I get it wrong because the universe isn't going to change rules on you law of attraction isn't going to suddenly start behaving differently so you're going to come to understand the effectiveness of what you're doing by what happens in response and by that we mean by how you feel and we want you to get 100% out of the problem-solving mode because the problem solving mode is always the blocking mode. It's always a resistant mode. The problem solving mode always clouds your receptivity and your receptivity is the only thing that you're reaching for. I just started realizing that when I feel good, things go good. So I just started really paying attention to my mood and I found out I can always control my mood. I can't control what's happening out there, but I can control my mood. Well, how? What if something bad happens? How can you look at something bad and control your mood? Oh, I can't. Can't look at bad things and feel good. So I just don't look at them. What if they're right in your face? Well, they used to be in my face more, but the more I don't look at them, the less they come around. So stuff that bothers me becomes less and less and I just get happier and happier. How are you going to turn that vibration to a thought and that thought into a manifestation? How are you going to keep that momentum going? You keep that momentum going by beginning again tomorrow and beginning again tomorrow. Yeah. Conditions will take you this way and this way and this way and this. But if you're reaching for the feeling, the emotion of love, if that's the manifestation that you're going for. So if you're just going for the manifestation of love, that's easy. It's the most natural instinct that you have. So sometimes as we talk about unconditional love, people think that what we mean is you'll get really good at this. You'll get tuned in, tapped in, turned on. You'll get in sync with source. One who's connected to the stream is more powerful than a million who aren't. And then you will control the conditions around you so that you can feel good. A lot of people, that's as far as they're getting in this conversation of unconditional love. Where what we mean by unconditional love is, I want so much to be in concert with the source within me that I am in this experience and this one and this one and this one, I'm feeling for alignment. I'm feeling for alignment. I'm feeling for it and finding it. 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 So now I'm in the receptive mode and in the receptive mode, I only have access to the conditions that match the receptive mode. I'm not controlling the conditions. 
so that I can find more good ones. I'm tuning to the conditions, but it's, I'm not doing it for the conditions. I'm doing it for the alignment. Can you feel the difference? Sort of someone said, Abraham, how does one get rid of doubt? And we said good before one. it starts, which is totally annoying. But what we mean by that is get up and tune yourself to alignment, which isn't doubt. And then hold yourself in the frequency of what feels good and doubt will never come. But if you wait till it comes and then you try to get rid of it, all you do is validate it and practice the vibration of it longer. Can you feel this in time? You will be out ahead of it. Your mood matters more than you ever, ever, ever thought that it did. But most people think that their mood is controlled by conditions. That's conditional love. If you don't let your mood be controlled by conditions, if you control your mood because you mean to, when you have a great day around others who aren't, now you know you got it. My goal is to wake up tomorrow happy and see how far into the day I can go and still feel happy.